On today's show, sturgeon season opens on the St. Croix River for one month every year. Time to float down the St. Croix with a guide who specializes in catching this ancient fish. And it's time for our Walk in the Park series. This week, we head north to where Paul Bunyan is rumored to roam and where the boardwalks lead to bogs. Next, what's Laura cooking in the kitchen this week? How about mixing a little salad and a little venison and see what you get? This week, our Minnesota Bound Classic is a story about a tree that might look like an evergreen, except during Minnesota's fall season, it turns yellow. Don't miss the 101 on the Tamarack. Those stories and more, next. Minnesota Bound. Brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Hi everybody, Raven and I welcome you to the show. You know, we like to think of ourselves here in Minnesota as walleye anglers, northern pike, panfish, you know. But there are some other fish swimming in Minnesota, some of them strange. Travis Frank found some and he has the story. Every good angler has their sweet spot. For Brian Clowder, it happens to include a dance. The idea is, is that you'll be doing a sturgeon dance today. We want you to be manhandled by a sturgeon. I would like to be manhandled by a sturgeon. <laughs> the sturgeon dance means to battle Minnesota's largest and oldest fish. We shall do battle with the dinosaur, they say. Exactly. This whole area is just a basin and these fish move around in pods. How old is a 50-inch sturgeon? It's about 25 years old. It's an ancient fish. They haven't changed much in the last 10,000 years. Brian is Minnesota's only guide dedicated strictly to catfish and sturgeon. No, this isn't your average fishing trip. It's not a walleye charter. I go for fish that do not have scales. Lake sturgeon, shovel nose sturgeon, and flathead and channel catfish. His business partner, Nicole Mitchell, knows why these trophy fish are so special. It's just power, it's extreme. Come September, sturgeon season opens on the St. Croix River. The sturgeon season is, starts the first weekend after Labor Day and runs until the end of September for if you want to catch one. And then after that, it's two weeks of catch and release. And these fish are a success story in itself. Back in the 70s when they came up with the Clean Water Act, it cleaned up the St. Croix River, and uh, the surgeon are coming back mostly from that. Here, crawly, crawly, crawly. The population has bounced back, and our quest for a sturgeon dance is on. That is a sturgeon entree. Upping the ante, Nicole wagers a bet. If I catch it, he has to eat the minnow. I catch a sturgeon, you eat the minnow. Yep, flathead minnow. And if you catch a sturgeon, I'll eat a minnow. All right, let's get after it. I've never eaten a minnow before. I've never even thought of it. it kind of keeps it interesting. And wouldn't you know, the ball is in my court first. Got him, got him. Oh yeah. Got him, fish on. I don't think we've got a monster on our hands. Oh, it's a catfish. It is a nice one. There we go. That's an awfully weird looking sturgeon. Yeah. Fun battle, but it's not quite what we're after. We'll put him back. A slimy goodbye. Now we need a sturgeon. A fishing river is you just never know what you're gonna catch, how big or, or what size. Kind of the beauty of it. Beauty and anticipation. At this point, it's not really about the fish anymore. It's about who's gonna eat the minnow. My money is on Nicole. Here, sturgeon, 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 sturgeon. <laughs> Not so fast. Oh, <laughs> Who's the boss? Who's the boss? Who's the boss? How you doing there? Oh. <laughs> the sturgeon oh. dance is that you're supposed to lead. Oh, that's, oh, that's a beautiful fish. Oh. Look at it. Oh. It's like a dinosaur. <laughs> Look at there. That is a dinosaur if I've ever seen one. What a cool creature. So cool. 
it's more like leather than Yeah, it's like a anything. shark. Awesome. I want to get it back. Okay, let's get her back in. What an incredible creature. Oh. Oh. I think he was ready. <laughs> I'd say it's ready to go. <laughs> that was awesome. And now, no. you get to eat a minnow. I can't, I never knew that this was actually gonna happen. I told you, you not to use just worms. You, I know, <laughs> you did it. You did this to me. Seeing one of them next to the boat, you get goosebumps. That's all you can say, you just get goosebumps. Not one to be outdone, Nicole shows off her dance moves too. Got him? Yeah. Oh, boy, mama, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, yeah. Where's my netter? Where's my netter? Oh, 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 oh. Look at thank you, baby. With BK Trophy Catch Fishing and Sturgeon Adventures, it's always a, an adventure. Bye, baby. An unforgettable experience, but we still have one more piece of business to get to. All right, find a big, juicy one. Not too big of one. A bet is a bet, Nicole. I guess that's what happens when you go sturgeon fishing with BK. Coming up, it's time for a walk in the park. This week, how about Lake Bemidji State Park? Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Connecticut. And by Starkey Hearing Technologies. Welcome back. It's time now to continue our series we call A Walk in the Park, a state park, for example. This time we're going to Lake Bemidji State Park, shaped, they tell me, like Paul Bunyan's right foot. We're going to tour that park through the camera lens of Mickey Us. Most visitors come away with kind of a bit of wilderness in an area where there's a lot of city amenities but they also like the setting of the remoteness. I think the park is a little bit of a wilderness oasis. Lake Bemidji State Park is located on the northeast shore of Lake Bemidji, about seven miles from the town of Bemidji, which is the first city on the Mississippi River. The park started in 1923 as only 300 acres and has grown to over 1,700 acres. The lake would be the most noticed feature and most used. Virtually all the people that come to the park spend some time down by the lake, maybe swimming or boating, fishing. There's really two good beaches on Lake Bemidji and the park has the nicest one. It is a shallow beach, so there is good swimming on Lake Bemidji. We've got a nice boat access where people can put their boat in in a protected marina. Probably the most popular lake activity is fishing. Camping is a very popular activity that people do. Many times people arrange to meet other camping groups here so that it's a social camp. Also biking. Paul Bunyan State Trail is a paved trail that stretches from Lake Bemidji State Park all the way down to Crow Wing State Park south of Brainerd. And it's been a very popular trail in the central part of Minnesota. The park has about 12 miles of hiking trail. Most of them are earthen. The boardwalk is one of the more attractive features in the park. That's our premier trail. Along the boardwalk are some things we'll take a look at, and at the end, Big Bog Lake. The boardwalk is a unique opportunity for people to get out into a bog. The challenge of traveling in a bog is that the moss is very soft and there's quite a bit of water underneath, so you break through if you were to try and just walk through the bog. 
This is a real good time of the year because the bog is in bloom. The showy lady slipper is pretty close to its peak. We also have another orchid called grass pink. We have a couple plants that are carnivorous. Up here on the right is the leaf flower sundew with its sticky little tentacles. Captures an insect and holds it on the leaf. Enzymes are secreted and the insect is digested. This is the leaf of pitcher plant, which captures rainwater, but then attracts an insect by the red lines to go down into the leaf where it eventually drowns and then is digested. Okay, we've reached the end of the boardwalk and we're at Big Bog Lake as we refer to it. It's actually a very shallow pond. Well, if you head this way, we're gonna go to the overlook on Rocky Point Trail. Probably the most prominent view is up on Rocky Point, which overlooks the lake. It's a very popular spot for people to come and see the whole lake. Across the lake, we're seeing the city of Bemidji. The local legend has it that if you look carefully, this is Paul Bunyan's foot, his heel, and his big toe. They say many of the lakes are a result of Paul and Babe walking through the soft swamps of northern Minnesota. Sunsets are real pretty because it sets right to the west of Rocky Point. I guess the telling thing for me is that I've enjoyed the park for 31 years as the naturalist and I still find stuff that's intriguing to me. Pepper. A little bit of Laura Shera is wild in the kitchen this time, cooking up some ideas for fall venison. Closed captioning is brought to you by By the Yard, premier manufacturers of maintenance free outdoor patio furniture and accessories from recycled plastic. Time now to go wild in the kitchen. Daughter Laura is joined by Chef Paul and they tell me they're making something called a venison salad. It's time to get wild in the kitchen with Chef Paul from Firelight Grill House and Cocktail Bar. And Chef Paul, there is a chill in the air. So I understand we're making venison steak salad. That is correct. Now it may be fall, but we're not quite ready to put our grills away yet. No way. And there's a great way to take advantage of those unique fall flavors, but still get our grilling in. What we're gonna do is we're gonna first make a simple marinade. We're gonna start off with some virgin olive oil. Start whisking now. Now soy sauce is gonna give me the umami that I want that mmm factor. Okay, so now we're just gonna add a little grain mustard to that. So now, all we wanna do is dip the venison steaks. We're gonna marinate that and let that set for up to an hour. Those steaks have been marinated for about an hour. Now I'm gonna sprinkle it liberally with Montreal steak spice. Throw it on a good hot grill. As with all game, we don't wanna overcook it. We want it to come out medium rare. So this is about a minute each side, you said? Yep, about a minute each side. So I'm gonna turn it four times. It's gotta be medium rare. Okay. See how it's starting to look sure. a little moist on top? That tells me it's medium rare. When you're first grilling a steak, especially on a steak salad, let it rest. So for today's salad, we're gonna do a nice mix of fall greens. So we have arugula, we have baby kale, and we have baby spinach. Then we've grilled some onions on the grill. And as you can see, Nice and caramelized. Yep, yep. We just rubbed them with oil, grilled them over a cooler part of the grill till they turn translucent, then let them cool down. I like to cut them in quarters. We're gonna put that in there. Butternut squash, perfect fall vegetable. We've diced it, tossed in a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of allspice, roast the oven at 350 degrees until it's just tender and cooked okay. through. The crunch of celery, some candied walnuts, sure. that's right and then some nice fall apples that have been julienne. And then we have a cider vinaigrette. Pinch of pepper? A little bit of pinch of pepper and a little bit of salt. Don't ever forget, you should always season your salads. And we're just gonna toss those ingredients to get them all coated. Our steak, look at those gorgeous juices. And there you go, a perfect 
fall venison salad. It certainly is, so don't put your grills away quite yet because there's plenty of time to get wild in the kitchen. Hi, I'm Rob Jerislein, Managing Editor of the Outdoor News Publications. Minnesota's most conservative deer season in more than two decades is on tap for this fall as the state DNR attempts to rebuild whitetail populations that have been hit hard by hunters in a couple of tough winters. Hunters in 95% of the state can shoot only one deer this fall, and 14 permit areas in the northeastern part of Minnesota have been designated as bucks only. Some areas allowed up to five deer just a few years ago. The DNR says the overall decline in this fall's kill will be very significant and the agency expects the total harvest for all seasons to run between 120,000 and 150,000 deer. That's compared to 173,000 deer last year, which already marked the third straight year the kill had dropped. Whitetail deer harvest has been dropping since 2003 when hunters killed a record 290,000 deer. Since then, the DNR's goal has been to reduce the deer population in most parts of the state, though the agency says the past two winters packed the punch that resulted in the populations being so far below goal right now. After hearing strong concern from state hunters that deer numbers have been too low, the DNR designed this year's regulations to rebuild the herd. The strategy for this fall will protect the does, reduce the statewide harvest, and should allow the population to rebound. Some help from Mother Nature in the form of a mild winter or two wouldn't hurt either. Officials from the Minnesota Deer Hunters Association and other hunting groups said the regulations are a good move on the DNR's part and they're supporting the short-term pain in exchange for a little long-term gain. The state's archery deer hunting season began on September 13th and the 2014 firearms deer season kicks off on November 8th. For regular updates on how the deer season plays out this fall, check out the print edition of Outdoor News or view us online at OutdoorNews.com. I'm Rob Jerisla. Still ahead, a Minnesota-bound classic on one of my favorite trees, the tamarack. Minnesota-bound, brought to you by Jesse Treble Foundation Systems and Safe Basements Waterproofing, Radco Truck Accessories, and by Seven Clans Casino. Time now for our Minnesota Bound Classic, all about the tamarack tree. You know, you see them in the summer like a green evergreen, and in the fall, they look a beautiful, brilliant yellow. Every tree has a story, including the tamarack. It's a tree lovelier than poetry, to paraphrase Joyce Kilmer. It's also a tree most of us see without knowing what we see. Call it poetic justice for the tamarack tree. It looks like an evergreen one day, only to look days later like an autumn maple. The tamarack is a tree that um, has needles on it, has up to 15 small needles in each cluster. That's, that in itself is not unusual, but what's unusual about it is that each fall, those needles turn bright yellow uh, into a golden fiery yellow, and then they uh, drop from the tree. Along with two looks, the tamarack tree even has two names. It's known as the American larch to people who know trees. In the summer, people who don't know trees figure the larch slash tamarack is just another pine tree. In early America, the pioneers thanked tamarack for lots of things. A concoction from the leaves or bark cured everything from piles to diarrhea. As the days of summer change to autumn, the tamarack, too, begins a transformation from plain green to brilliant yellow. Maybe tamaracks glow simply to be noticed. Author James Boswell once noted, we must take our friends as they are. Perhaps the same should be said of the lowly tamarack. After all, any tree that cures diarrhea is a friend of mine. Beautiful story about the tamarack. I'm betting you'll never look at that tree the same again. Well, that about does it for us. Remember, introduce a kid to the great outdoors, show him a tamarack tree. That about does it. I'm Ron Sherr, and of course, always the star of the show is Raven.
Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433. For more information on these stories and more, catch us on the web at mnbound.com.